Hello there and welcome to Sanger Studios. Today I want to show you this, which is a 25 key one stringed travel clavichord. Uh, it's not quite finished yet, um, but I think the next stages of painting and finishing and attaching the lid and everything is going to take me a little while and I've got a few other things to do so I'm just sharing a progress report really. Um, it's already been on quite a journey to get to this point. When I first came up with the concept of this instrument I imagined it with an isomorphic keyboard and an electromagnetic pickup here. I'm going to call this day one of the new instrument project. Recalculating pin locations. Okay, I've tuned the string up to the tension it would be on a guitar. It's a very rusty old string that I grabbed off my old diddly bow. Um, but with that in mind, it's way louder than I thought it would be, playing it as if it was a clavichord.
the little nail I was using for a nut was just pulled through this wood and come off. So I need to rethink how I attach the string up here, which is annoying. I had planned to make a very portable one stringed clavichord with an isomorphic keyboard and uh, I was going to do a big reveal and show you uh, this beautiful instrument when it was finished but I've got nearly there and I'm not happy with it so uh, I want to show you what I'm not happy with so first of all this is the isomorphic keyboard uh, or quasi isomorphic if you like because they're not quite equidistant with a true isomorphic keyboard all the intervals would be exactly the same distance apart um, but with mine it's kind of slightly stretched in different directions because uh, of the way I made the instrument um, so it works <laughs> fine. Um, the, the issue is that these notes up here um, are too close to the pivot points. So they're okay, but they kind of squeak around down here. It's a very nice action. Up here, So a lot of these top notes are kind of quite unplayable. So I think reluctantly I'm going to shelve the idea of an isomorphic keyboard for the time being um, and think about it for the future. I need a longer key extension down here to be able to do that. And that's not really compatible with the idea of a, um, a portable clavichord, unfortunately. So um, I'm going to remove all of these uh, kind of mushroomy things off the top. I'm going to cut the keys. Um, if I've calculated correctly, um, at about six centimeters from the pivot point, all the keys should be about equidistant. Um, and they should be about the same distance apart as they would be on a piano keyboard. So I'm gonna cut the keys at about six centimeters, and then I'm going to add some extensions and turn it into a normal keyboard again, um, which won't need to be as high as these top notes. Um, even the black notes will only be a couple of centimeters higher than this, whereas this is three centimeters or more, in fact. Um, they won't need to be as high and they won't need to be as close to the pivot points either. They can be further down this way. So the action should be pretty much sorted if I do that. Um, and I'll still have a fun instrument to play. Whereas this one, it's it was a great experiment and I'm very happy. Um, well, I'm a little annoyed, but I'm pretty happy. Uh, but I think it needs to be shelved for a future project, the, uh, the isomorphic layout. Um, but the other thing was the keys, because I slightly miscalculated, they were banging into each other. So I had to cut these um, shapes out of the sides of the keys to stop them banging. Um, and I just think it's not nearly as pretty as it could be. So um, reluctantly, it's bye-bye to the isomorphic keyboard for now.
Hi there. Um, I've bought this piezo pickup, or piezo, uh, however you pronounce it, and I'm moving it around on the soundboard to see where it gives the best tone. It's slightly unscientific. Um, and then I'm going to try and get it underneath through the sound hole and stick it on the bottom in the best place. Um, anyway, let's have a go. It's a noisy business. I'm going to roll up this piece of masking tape. I think double sided tape is going to be a bit too strong and annoying. Attach it to the end of my middle finger, which, as we know, is the longest finger. I'm going to pop it on the back of the piezo, like that, and then I should be able to slide it in and up and as far as I can and then squeeze it onto the top of the idea. So uh, here's how it sounds through the piezo pickup. So the audio comes from the pickup, which is in here somewhere. You can hear it um, through this little volume control, out of this wire, uh, and through a hardware EQ into the computer. Um, here's the same scale again, but just with my uh, uh, mobile phone audio, so you can hear roughly what it sounds like acoustically. So this is my voice, and here's the scale again. This one string uh, comes from this side of the box here. It goes all the way over these keys um, through this, which is just a piece of red cloth I'm using to damp the string. I haven't really worked out the best way to attach that yet. Um, then it comes around a little screw here and uh, a guitar tuner this side. Like an, an, any other clavichord, each of these keys has a piece of metal attached called a tangent, which strike when it strikes the key, it's like hammering on on the guitar. And then when you release it, this cloth around the string damps it automatically. You can hear still that there's a little bit of key bumping going on. through the piezo pickup. Um, I've managed to EQ quite a lot of that out. It's even bumpier without the uh, uh, the EQ on it. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the keyboard certainly doesn't have as nice an action as it would if the keys were longer. With my previous clavichord, um, which uh, if you haven't seen, please take a look at, the, uh, the keys were a lot longer and the action is very nice. Whereas this, you have to... It doesn't feel quite so nice to play. But one of the constraints I set myself was to try and make the instrument absolutely as small as I could make it. So I think it's reasonably successful. Because it only has one string, you can play interesting trills and things. arpeggios and uh, the only thing you can't do of course is play chords um, there is a little bit of vibrato a little bit um, not as much as the other clavichord I made. Um, 
The reason being that this string is tuned a lot tighter. I found that with this scale length, using um, any thicker strings or looser strings resulted in almost no sustain. This is the most sustain I managed to get. It's a D string, but I think it's probably tuned a third or a fourth higher than it would be on a guitar. So I was kind of expecting it to break. It's an electric guitar D string, by the way. I tried acoustic strings, I tried everything. Um, I would really have preferred this keyboard to be an octave lower. In my mind, this C would have been an octave lower. Um, I don't feel like it's quite so useful, but um, you know, that's physics for you, I suppose. I will share another update with you uh, at a later date once I've uh, you know, painted it and finished it and attached the lid and everything. Uh, and maybe I'll have managed to tweak it a bit and make it sound a bit better by then. So, thank you very much for watching. As usual, if you enjoyed this, and I do feel really presumptuous asking this kind of thing, but uh, please subscribe and uh, give this video a thumbs up. Knowing that people are watching uh, these videos and hopefully enjoying them gives me a lot of motivation to make these weird instruments. So uh, thank you once again and see you next time.